Well, two people at the heart of the sexual harassment uh, embroiled, embroiled in the sexual, sexual harassment scandals at Fox News are Doug Wigdor. He's an attorney handling 22 claims against Fox News, and Juliet Huddy, who's a former Fox News anchor who accused Bill O'Reilly of misconduct. Thank you both so much for being here. Julia, good to see you. <laughs> good Thank to you, see you. I'm trying to keep it together. I can't believe I'm getting so emotional. I know. We worked that was together. amazing, by the way. Thank you. We worked together for years, as did Bill and I, as did you and Bill. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard talking about this. You say, <laughs> I can tell that you're affected by it. Right? I mean, I, it, yeah. It's women who, women who have to deal with this type of stuff. It's everything you said is, is so true. The fear of of lawyers, no offense, you know, going up against corporate attorneys, you know, people who are trained at Harvard and educated at Yale and Oxford. And you know that you're just this one person that's about to go up against literally a machine. And it is daunting and it's frightening. And it, it's, it kind of, it, it holds you back from taking action sometimes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just, you know, I, I talked specifically about the, the media relations chief at Fox News, uh, with whom I got along for years. Uh, until I didn't back else, and then things changed. And women everywhere understand that they can be shamed. They can not only be sued, they can be shamed in ways that have fingerprints on it and that do not have fingerprints on it, Doug. Yeah, I mean, Irina Briganti, who you mentioned in your, your very powerful piece before we came on, um, has been doing this for years, and she's still there. That's part of their playbook. They have a big playbook, but that is definitely a central part of it. I mean, she has outed actual victims who, uh, like Scotty Hughes, who accused Charles Payne of rape and who's now on the air, Charles Payne. She outed her to a tabloid. But really, when you look at the story, and it was an excellent piece of journalism by Emily Steele and Mike Schmidt at the New York Times, but when you look at that piece, the hubris that Fox showed by knowing all of the sexual harassment victims and what was going on, to not only renew Bill O'Reilly's contract, but they gave him a pay raise to boot. It is just incredible. And there were- They claim, the Fox News claims, that it knew he had settled with lease, but it didn't know the terms. Well, um, if you, in the, in the Times article, they say they had a copy of the term sheet, which in, for lawyers speak is sort of the essential terms of the agreement, but without the dollar value. There's a lot we still need to know. What did the executives, what did the Murdochs know, and when did they know it? And what efforts have they taken to actually um, deprive shareholders, the public, and, uh, and the government, the U.S. Attorney's Office? Because one of the things that we saw in, that, uh, in the affidavit, for instance, or in the term sheet, was that evidence was destroyed um, as part of this agreement. In other words, let's settle the claim and you get rid of all the emails and the text messages that we Ex ever exchanged with one exactly. another. Exactly. And so it makes it easy. Bill O'Reilly can come on Matt Lauer's show and say, all the, you know, my 42 years, it's been great and, you know, nobody's ever accused me of any wrongdoing. Well, if you're paying off victims, you're holding money over their head for years, stringing it out over years, buying them to confidentiality, and then the evidence is destroyed. That is a serious but, but even, problem. I mean, the truth is that that ignores, the whole argument ignores the realities of what life was like at Fox News when it came to the Human Resources Department and, and, and the general counsel who's now gone. Um, that was not a viable option in the eyes of most of the women there. It well, was controlled by Ailes. A lot of people feel um, that human resources, I mean, if I, I bet if I take a poll of the audience, when you think of Human Resources Department, many of us think of them as sort of protecting the bosses, not protecting the employees, which is what they're supposed to be there for. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, that's an intimidating factor. And it's also a reason that maybe women don't go to the human resources department because they don't think they're going to be backed up. They feel like when they walk out of the department, they're going to have a bullseye on them and they're going to be labeled troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Like that maybe somebody else will fire at. And maybe it's not HR, maybe, it, maybe it's the press, maybe it's somebody who deals with it. There's all sorts of ways that they can retaliate without you have, being able to prove it. And again, companies, you know, corporations are machines. They have, again, lawyers, they have the human resources departments, everybody working for them. And so when they, when they have an employee go rogue, you know, you know that you're probably going to be facing, I'm not speaking specifically about myself, but you know that you're going to be facing a machine, a behemoth coming after mm -hmm. you, and probably not too concerned about your reputation and or your future. And, and that retaliation is part of the playbook. When people complained at Fox News, they were retaliated. We, we represent Lydia Uchik, who's a local Fox 5 News reporter. She complained, she, she stood up, she said that she was discriminated against because she disclosed her pregnancy. To this day, she still works there, but they're 
they're retaliating against her. We represent Jessica Gallagher, who's a radio correspondent. The day after she complained, she was fired. But I want to say, I want to stay, I'll just make, well, make, make clear, I practiced law for 10 years, too. These are allegations. They're yet unproven. Fox News hasn't had its day in court, and it gets to have that. And even, even un, invalid claims can be settled, you know, just to get rid of them. Um, so people don't have to deal with the nonsense of litigation. The reason, one of the reasons the lease wheel settlement has made such headlines is because $32 million is not nuisance value. That's a huge number. And when a lot of lawyers question whether it is reasonable to, for the company to be saying it didn't know that O'Reilly would have paid 32 million bucks. Yeah. And, and the next question is, if they didn't know, why didn't they know? Oh. Why, why didn't they find out before re-signing him? Yeah. Uh, but hold on, I'm gonna leave it on that because we're, we have more with Julia after the break. I, we're back now with former Fox News anchor Juliet Huddy and her attorney Douglas Wigdor. Last year, Juliet settled a lawsuit alleging sexual harassment by then Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. So. I know that you signed a non-disclosure agreement in connection with the settlement. And as a lawyer, you know I can't talk about anything. You, you can't. Do, do you regret signing that? Let me ask you that. Um, I... Just talk more uh, about women signing non-disclosure I'll broaden it out. I think, I think, like I said, I think, I think women, many women go in to the settlement agreement because they just don't want to face what potentially could be coming at them. Um, again, it's, you're dealing with a corporation filled with people who are going to do everything they possibly can to make sure that they win and you don't. And you know, if you're just a woman who you know, made $100,000 a year and you've got bills to pay and you've got other things going on and, and you're, you, know, you have to worry about facing you know, bad, bad press and all that, you know, it's just, it's, you gotta think about your future. And some people just wanna make it go away and just move on with their lives. Are you scared today? I'm terrified, here? I'm actually terrified and I don't know why I'm about to cry, but. Um, it, it's just, it, it's, it's difficult, it, it's difficult. I think people have regrets. I think people have regrets when they sign non-disclosure agreements. I, I would imagine that they do. I think, I think it's, um, it's something that you grapple with when you're going through it and then you try, you think it's the best move to make, but it's not, not necessarily the best move. Because you feel very alone and like you are the only one and you don't know that you're part of this the, underground part of a group. sorority. Right. I think, I think if, if settlement agreements didn't happen, if there weren't non-disclosures, more women would feel like, okay, I, I, I could potentially fight this if they know that there are other women who have gone through the same thing. Mm. But, you know, typically you don't know that there are other women. You, the, the lease wheel settlement, according to the Times, it's going to be paid out the $32 million over, the, over four years. Yeah. There's and, a reason they usually do it that way. Yeah, and that, that's designed to chill her from speaking out. Um, if you dangle the money over four years, then they have an incentive to go after her if she violates the confidentiality agreement. But just picking up on what Juliet said, there, there, there are a lot of women who are silent sufferers, people who have not come forward for fear of the Fox and other companies playbook, which is to attack. Well, we saw that, it's not just Fox, so look at Harvey Weinstein. That's right, to attack legitimate victims of harassment, sexual assault, rape, and the like. And this $32 million settlement, I mean, it had, it. Fox was the recipient of a release in that settlement. They got something in return for it. And their head lawyer, Gerson Zweifak, who's the head lawyer at 21st Century Fox in the Times piece, is talking about how they can hide that fact from the federal government. And it just shows you the knowledge about what they had, what they were trying to deceive the public, shareholders, viewers, and everyone else from doing. We haven't heard directly from Gerson on that, uh, but we did, we did get a statement from 20, 21st Century Fox, which owns Fox News Channel. They, they say this, 21st Century Fox has taken concerted action to transform Fox News, including installing new leaders, overhauling management and on-air talent, expanding training and increasing the channels through which employees can report harassment or discrimination. These changes come from the top, with Lachlan and James Murdoch personally leading the effort to promote civility and respect on the job, while maintaining the company's long-held commitment to a diverse, inclusive, and creative workplace. I just need to respond to that, if I could, just yeah. be because Please. it's preposterous. It really is. They, they pay Bill O'Reilly. They give him a raise after everything we've talked about. They pay him $20 million when he leaves. They pay, pay Roger Ailes $40 million when he, he leaves. That, that is and, done all the time to get rid and, of a problematic executive, though, well, all the time. Well, not when they're accused of all sorts of sexual yes, harassment. Yes, even and, then. And, and then they have the audacity to continue to fight 
22 legitimate claims of well, discrimination and harassment. Well, they don't think they're legitimate, Doug. I mean, you, know, not, you can get into the specifics about the litigation, but people fight litigation, and there's a real belief among many, including our current president, that if you settle one claim, you're going to be the, re the recipient of many, many, many other claims. They might, but they've but already, listen, ca it they've is already true. called it abhorrent behavior. So, you know, you took, take a look at the, our race discrimination case, 12 people of color who are just grotesquely discriminated against based on their color. Fox News puts out a statement that the behavior was abhorrent. They've admitted to it they, already. Didn't they, didn't they fire the woman? They fired the woman who was at that. After we had to file a lawsuit. Guilty of that. I mean, the thing is, Fox. It's they're not wrong that they've, they've made changes. They have made changes. Bill Shine, who I mentioned in that email, is no longer there. Abernathy is still running the company. O'Reilly's gone. Uh, Diane Brandy, the general counsel, is gone. Irina Briganti's still there. Um, but they have made changes. The question is, I mean, the reason that the lease wheel settlement was so shocking is because it, it was made after Ailes was gone and while they were trying to improve the culture and when they knew he had settled five other cases. Yeah, you know, but when it they starts knew. at the top, Megan. It starts with the Murdochs, who are still there and running the company. And if you look at their board and you look at the number of women on that board, um, I think it's just a couple. There are not many people of color. There's not many people who have experience in diversity, experience in making sure that the Human Resources Department and the Legal Department make sure that when people complain about discrimination in the workplace, mm -hmm. that they're not further victimized and retaliated, that they actually can, I tell you can stand up. Thing. I, I feel like, okay, yes, Human Resources, absolutely, and Fox News has a new person in there overseeing that kind of thing who supposedly doesn't answer to management. But it's even, even knowing, even when I had been there, because I, I complained against Ailes, I wouldn't have gone to that person. I would have been terrified. I would have been worried that it would have gotten back. I mean, we have to find a better way as a society. We, ha we need men in powerful positions to stand up for us when, when we do complain and take yeah, us seriously, mm -hmm. right? And we need to find the underground army at our respective places because I think if the Weinstein accusers had known how many other women there were, if we had known how many other women had been suffering at Fox News, these things would have ended much sooner. I'll give you and last women word. think that their careers are going to be torpedoed, and they could be potentially torpedoed if you have the right machine behind you coming from the company's point of view. Do you, do you have another job? No. <laughs> On that happy note. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is another day. Yes, it is. It's great to see you. Great seeing you. Brave of you to be here. Thanks. Doug, Thank thanks you, to you, Megan. too. Appreciate it. Thank you guys all, too, as well. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.